All right, hi. Will here with the final attempt, and I'm talking to you today about some of the production that goes into the final attempt and like making all of this work. So Stu and I film this docu-series on right now four different cameras. Um, so I have the Canon C70, and then that's an R5. And then Stu shoots on an a7 IV and then an FX3, um, and sometimes an a7 III. And then I used to have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. When we're shooting with all these different cameras, we have to try our best to make things look as if they're all shot on one camera. And in order to do that, we have to manipulate color a lot. Even between these two cameras that are produced by the same company, um, their sensors interpret colors differently. So these are actually set at the same, uh, they have the same settings. Like they're both rocking 24 frames per second. Both of them have a white balance of 48,000 Kelvin. We're shooting at F2 on both of these bad boys. And as you can see, if I'm just gonna, so I'll just like put Rec 709, which is like standard broadcast um, color space. Rec 709 conversions on both of these clips, and you can see how different they are, right? And this is just between two cameras that are made by the same company. So when we're talking about multiple different cameras over this whole span of time, we have to really work on um, creating color profiles that make all these cameras match. And for episode one, I was doing that all manually. And for me to color each scene, God, it took, it honestly took the most amount of time was just nailing the colors because all these sensors see color differently, especially the black magic. We had so many issues with that camera interpreting blacks differently, which sounds bananas, but they don't have good IR cut filters and IR is infrared. You can't pick it up with your eyes, but our camera sensors can if they don't have a good IR cut filter. Black Magic was like, nah, we're not gonna do that. So all of my blacks on everything I shot with the Black Magic looked kind of purple and magenta. So correcting all of that after the fact for episode one was a total headache. I mean, most of my editing time was spent in the color page of DaVinci Resolve trying to get that camera to match everything else. And then you had Stu with two different camera bodies at the time. He was working with an a7 III and an a7 IV, I believe. So even those two cameras, they're the same brand, the same model, except for one's a little bit newer. Those sensors capture color so differently. And then the FX3, a7 IV now, again, same camera manufacturer, same, I, like, same color sciences, but they just see things differently. So... One thing that has made our lives so much easier when it comes to editing and getting these episodes out is a plugin called Cinematch. Uh, we're not sponsored by Cinematch, but hey, I like a Cinematch, so if you wanna like, you know, sponsor us or something, that'd be cool. But Cinematch is great because what it does is it takes the, it's some dude, I don't know his name and I feel terrible because he created such an awesome thing. He created color profiles for each sensor, um, and it's like all of the major brands. So there's one for the Canon C70, there's a color profile for the R5, color profile for all of Stu's cameras, even for the Black Magic, which was a total piece of garbage. Okay, I love the Black Magic, but that thing sucked for some things, and one of them was color management. But this guy, uh, actually it's a group of guys, came up with, came up with these color profiles so you can match all of these sensors to make them look the same, and you can choose what sensor you want it to look like. So for example, for episode two, I matched everything to look like uh, Alexa Mini from Ari, um, and we colored it all to Ari Log C. So it's not perfect, right? Because um, with different shooting situations, sometimes our exposures can be a little bit off. Um, we got some weird color casts going on because of mixed lighting. Bogota was terrible for that. We had tungsten, we had daylight, we had some other color temperature that didn't match. So it, 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 scene by scene, you still have to make a couple of corrections, but 
instead of it taking two hours to get through one competition sequence, for me to color, it took maybe 30 minutes. Um, and it was because of this Cinematch plugin. So that's, um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Like I, I think it's only like 125 bucks um, and it made editing and producing episode two so much easier because I didn't have to be constantly just tweaking color temperature and tweaking saturation versus hue and tweaking luminance values. It was, oh, it's so hard and there's value in learning how to do that. But if you don't have to do it, especially if you're working under time crunches and stuff like that, Cinematch um, is great. So um, yeah, this is just a, one of those things that goes into producing a documentary and um, I'm happy to talk about more things when it comes to production, the uh, computers that we have to use, some of the processing that it takes. But um, yeah, for now, just uh, learn how to color match. But, you know, if you can find a way to make things easier, then by all means. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions about the production of the final attempt, for me or for Stu um, or for both of us, I know I want to sit down uh, when we're both together again and uh, maybe do a Q&A sort of situation where we can just get a bunch of questions from a bunch of different people and kind of get both of our takes on um, how we would go about doing that. So hope you like it. Um, if you haven't watched either of the episodes for the final attempt, please do so. Um, and uh, yeah, more production things coming. I think I don't really know how to end this. So bye. Hope you liked it. Um, that's it. <laughs>